Yo, welcome back to the BSD4 channel. We know what's going on. What is the deal? Today, we're going to be doing some 4.6 double overhead cam stuff, intake manifold stuff. This needs to be cleaned up really bad. So I'm going to open it up and see what's going on. There's a lot of just weirdness going on. Intake gasket leak. I've seen that. The fuel rails are quite different. It's on the other side, entering the other side. Like this Crown Vic one that's on the ground here. This is how it's really set up in the Crown Vic. Just like that. And you can see that it enters through the passenger side while the aviator enters from the driver's side. Now we have the situation that sits here, right? We have one here, but it's all the way up in the front. You know, those little differences, you know, you can kind of work around that. But the situation that's going to be really difficult is this part that's right here. We don't even know how to get this thing to go. I mean, we have some ideas. My man Paul gave me a great idea. My man Ford Blue gave me an idea. Best situation I see in my head is to use the Mustang situation, but you know, I'm going to be hard headed and try to get this to go because everybody would normally would use a Marauder or a Mustang situation. Now, this is what we were speaking about. This thing here, you know, all of this here, these things open up at a certain time. So, you know, we have to uh, uh, address this situation right here. Now, I thought that this was bad, but these are good. You know what I mean? These could be cleaned up a little bit, but um, clean the back end of them or something like that. But other than that, they're good because I started to put power, you know, negative, and you think that it would work not the case um, one of these is a trigger wire so that means that if there's anything with a signal in it it runs off the, the throttle position sensor so I started to really research it now if you know anything about the FR500 Mustang it has a similar setup like this but it runs open close very simple that's how this should have been but before we open this thing up we're gonna read you some literature on how this system actually operates inside of your intake manifold on one of these 4.6 double overhead cam engines inside of your aviator now the intake manifold tuning valve is a motorized actuating unit mounted directly to the intake manifold the IMTV actuator controls a shutter device attached to the actuator shaft there is no monitor input to the PCM with this system to indicate shutter position. The motorized IMTV unit will be energized below approximately 2600 RPM or higher on some vehicles. The shutter will be in the closed position, not allowing airflow to blend to occur into the intake manifold above approximately 2600 RPMs or higher. The motorized unit will be energized. The motorized unit will be commanded by the PCM initially at 100% duty cycle to move the shutter to the open position and then falling to approximately 50% to continue to hold the shutter open. The PCM uses the TP sensor and the CKP signals to determine the actuating of the IMTV. There must be a positive change in the voltage from the TP sensor along with the increase in RPM to open the shutter. The PCM uses information from the input signals to control the IMTV. When commanded by the PCM, the motorized actuator shutters opens the ends of the vertical separating the wall to allow both sides of the manifold to blend together. All right, just like I told you, circuit board. Once there's a circuit board, there's going to be certain types of coding that's going to be in the program to allow this thing here to run, especially running off a computer or a PCM, throwing out certain signals. Now, 12 volt signal is just a totally different signal. You need certain things in the parameters of the blah, 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 trying to sound all educated. You know, it just ain't going to work, all right? You know what I mean? The chips are there and all that stuff. The only way this thing will work is we ground here and we make it work. So I have an idea and what we're going to do is we're going to yank this thing out even though this is like a $70 thing right here. I could sell this used for a good price. But we're going to dismantle this thing. We just wanted to open and close. All right, man. We're skipping a lot of scenes. We've gotten this item here and as we glued it up, we soldered it inside and the power is up you know we use that battery over there we powered it up it works and it works fast so somehow we have to get a dial maybe to put it on here somewhere and be able to you know adjust um the linear motion of this item here um this little item right here sits on the back of this like this you know what i mean and then it controls the butterflies up there so there's two ways that i'm going to probably try this thing here first electronic the other one will be slash electronic slash vacuum activated. 
The vacuum activated one will be the most simple way to really do this. You know, I sat down with that for a little bit and I said, you know what, that might be the best way. The only thing is, is that I have to go ahead and wreck one of these. Finding another one of these is going to be difficult, but um, I'm willing to wreck one to just take the motor out and everything and leave this here free flowing and then try to hook up some kind of gadget onto here to like a lever. Somehow, I don't know which way it's going to go. It may have to go on this side, the plunger, because it'll suck and open it up and then some kind of have a, a, a something spring activated to spring it back or something like that. And um, that's really it on that. That's my idea on how I'm going to probably do that. And I don't have none of the pieces with me. So as I was doing this, man, I started and weld up the oil pan. When I started to weld up the oil pan, you know, I started doing the bottom of the engine. And when I started doing the bottom of the engine, trying to get everything right as far as the pickup tube height and everything and all of that then i just kept on going and i started doing the timing another one over there kind of see it right there that's the other timing mark and there's another one behind there also then you come down here you go underneath there there's another timing mark there this little piece is holding that on you go up here there's another timing mark and there's another one in there that goes up there and there's um, keyways on these cams, they need to be face down. You know what I mean? So when you have your chain and your sprocket together, you put it on in one piece and then you, you know, do what you have to do. Then I started working on a lot more other things behind the scenes where I wasn't really showing the videos and everything like that because I turned to really focus more on getting to the zone and everything like that. So, you know, as you can see now, the engine is all put together. I'm very sorry that I didn't show the timing components and how to put it on on each stage and everything like that. Um, this is what the engine looks like now. We got the valve covers done and everything like that. We've gotten um, the pulleys, a little bit of the pulleys on, the water pump is on, oil pan is on. Um, I gotta go get that, um, take that off and add um, the interceptor cooler, oil cooler thing on there. I mean, but for the most part, the engine is looking a lot better and I really didn't want it to look all blingish. I was gonna do the Ford Blue and I just changed my mind. I said, that's just too much. This is more my speed, this little silver dark gray type thing. Put a, um, a, a matte clear on it and you know, I don't want it to be too blingy. I just want it to be really subtle and it's not the greatest paint job because it's rattle can, but it's decent. And then I sprayed a little bit on the block, a little bit to kind of just get that ugliness out of there. Some areas I didn't do like right around here. I didn't do it, I didn't see no need and I just kept it moving on that note. So now we have to get back to this car here. We're gonna um, install this situation in here somewhere. And this is gonna activate this some kind of way as like a trigger. So I probably have to get another mechanism. So like I was mentioning, I'm gonna have a lot of parts coming in. I couldn't really do it all in this video because I really didn't know what I was doing. And we're just gonna have to get this um, underway. Now, if you guys look in here, hopefully you can probably see it. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the, the pedals. They're looking really nice, man. They're looking really nice, if you can see it. Man, that's good on that note. But, um, so man, we're gonna get back to this here on the channel, and you know, we're gonna be talking more about this engine here and trying to get that thing finished and getting that thing installed. Well, we did not install the um, lash adjusters inside of this, so that's why the valve covers are just sitting on top but we're gonna install the last, the, the lash adjusters um, very soon. Just bled them down, now they're soaking, and then we're gonna go ahead and install them in there, man. So, click like and subscribe, man. Thank you guys for just bearing with me on this update on what's going on with this here and this thing here. And um, now you guys kinda know how this thing operates. Now we gotta figure out how we can get this thing to work on this thing, on this thing, in that thing so we'll see you guys in the next one man all right later but we're not finished yet we got to run these daggone throttle plates or rmrc's or whatever you want to call these things it got to be electronically controlled but again like i said i'm probably do it in a vacuum form which would be good but it'd be it may be a little bulky so i have to figure out how i'm going to do that figure out the linkages and everything like that so and hopefully you guys can pick it up and leave the comments in the comment section on what you think can we 
really route and make this thing work. 